Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie. It's been a while since I've made a video, but I have been busy sewing and I've also bought a few extra pieces of fabric, which is a bit naughty. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I've been sewing and a few pieces of fabric that I've been buying as well. So first up is this number just here. So this is a little bit of a hack of the True Bias Nico pattern. And I've made, I used the dress version. So it's got the lovely little high neck, long sleeves, and I used the dress version, but I've like cropped it to be sort of like a tunic length. And then I've added these little slits in the side there that I hope you can see. And this fabric is a lovely sort of khaki jersey that I bought from the new craft house. And it's got ever so such, it's got like a slight shimmer in it in certain lights. This was a make that I wanted to do as a bit of an experiment because I've been after some comfy clothes to wear at the weekends. Now in the winter, if I'm, you know, if I'm going out with friends for lunch or like doing something, then of course I'll like get dressed properly. But if I'm just having more of a home day, if I'm in, in my flat and I'm sewing, I just want to be comfortable. But I also want to not feel like I'm just wearing like sweatpants or pajamas. So my new winter uniform is a pair of black leggings. I buy them from Uniqlo. They're like cotton and look lovely, and they don't go baggy at the knees or anything. And I just wanted some like big oversized sort of tunic length jumpers that would be cozy and comfortable but that would cover my bum because I personally don't feel like I'm dressed if I'm wearing leggings and my bum's on show. I feel like I need to wear a skirt or a dress or something over the top to not be like half dressed. Um, so yeah, like a tunic length jumper just works perfectly to cover my bum. I can, if I want to pop up to the shops, I can throw on like some little ankle boots or my over the knee fake suede boots, faux suede boots, and it works really well. I will say this fabric is a little bit more flimsy and with hindsight, I think it would have been better in a more stable jersey, but really good first attempt. And as you'll see, from what I'm wearing, which I'll tell you about a bit later, it has not been the first one of these True Bias Nico hacks that I've done, so a real success story. In order to make sure that it was nicely oversized, I, o I sized up by about three sizes to make sure that it was bigger and looser than the normal Nico. My next make is one that I, another one that I told you about in my most recent sewing plans and fabric haul video, and it's an alteration. So this is the finished product. This is a skirt that I made out of the Tilly and the Buttons Delphine skirt, but it just, it was never quite right. I hacked it a bit to give it a different fit, but the waistband was too chunky. I didn't quite like the fit of it. So what I've done is I've actually narrowed the waistband quite considerably to make it a much more narrow waistband. Um, and I've sort of curved it at the edges a bit more because it was very like A-line before, which it just didn't look quite right on me. Um, yeah, and it's actually, now that I've taken off the extra fabric at the sides, it is now a very, like very much a mini skirt. And I, the plan is like to wear it to work with a, blazer and a blouse and all the rest of it, but at the moment it is a bit too short. So although I've refashioned it once, I'm actually going to refashion it again and I'm going to unpick the hem and I'm going to add an extra panel of fabric at the bottom, just literally to give me an extra inch and a half or something. I don't think it needs to be loads longer, but yeah, maybe two inches, I don't know. Give me an extra bit of fabric at the bottom and I'm going to get some, in fact, I've got it, I've already bought it, I'll show you now. I'm lucky enough to work near VV Rouleau in Marlebone in London and I went in looking for some sort of Chanel style trim because I thought I could use some trim to conceal the extra seam that I'm, that I'm going to have at the bottom and I thought I potentially would also put some around the waist, not sure, but I wanted like a Chanel style trim and they had loads. Some of them were in such bright vibrant colours and it was so tempting to go crazy but Bearing in, the mind, bearing in mind that this is just like a plain black houndstooth, I didn't want it to look too much of like a jarring contrast. So I went for something quite simple. I've bought, I hope you can see this. It's like a fuzzy black trim and it's got like a few sparkly little black beads in it. I'm not sure how well that's focusing for you. But I thought that would be just an extra little bit of detail to disguise the seam where I'm gonna add the extra fabric. So I've kind of done the refashion, but I'm gonna refashion it again, and I'll let you know how it turns out. The third thing that I've made is 
um, out of this fabric, which was also in my sewing plans video, and it is like a black and navy sort of wool boucle effect fabric with these lovely like speckles on it. And I've used the sew over it pattern. I've hacked the sew over it pattern. Um, I've hacked the sew over it ultimate pencil skirt pattern to give me like a shorter like smart skirt. So what I did, this fabric is from the Goldhawk Road by the way. I lowered the I lowered the waist to like the natural waist because the sew over it ultimate pencil skirt such a mouthful sits above the natural waist. So I lowered that down to sit on my actual waist. Um, I lengthened the back darts because that's an alteration I like made before just to get it to fit me better. What else did I do? Let me check my notebook. I shortened it to be just above the knee because that's the length that I like prefer. I can feel more comfortable in at work. This is like a work skirt. Um, and I decided to interline the lining fabric with the boucle wool. I know it's probably a more professional finish to like to bag it out or whatever the term is but I've never had much luck with bagging out and I really wanted this to be a fairly simple make I didn't want to stress myself out by you know getting my lining in a muddle whenever I've bagged out a lining it just ends up not being a very neat finish so to turn this inside out I can show you what it looks like on the inside um I literally sewed the the outer fabric and the lining pieces together around the edges and then treated them as like one piece of fabric basically so you can see I've got my it's my seam where my zip is, it's my side seams and actually I'm really glad that I did that because it's turned out to be ever so slightly too big for me at the waist and when you've lined, properly lined a skirt and it's all bagged out it's such a pain to do alterations because you have to unpick the whole lining blah 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 whereas now you can see here all I need to do is like unpick my waistband at the side seams and sorry like I didn't even do a proper waistband or a proper facing as you can see I've literally just folded it over and sewed it down but it's worked fine and it means that now it's going to be so much more simple for me to unpick it and like take a bit in off the sides so that was really worth it and as you'll know if you saw my sewing plans video I've got more of this fabric which is going to be a jacket a matching jacket so I'm already halfway there to having like a really cute work outfit um, one thing I did make a bit of a mistake with with this one is that I decided to skip the kick pleat so the sew over it ultimate pencil skirt has a kick pleat at the back which is where you've got like a special like slit at the back to allow your legs to walk basically and I thought oh I'm shortening it I'm shortening it enough to not need the kick pleat it will be fine so I did omit the kick pleat and now I just don't quite have enough room to take my full stride because I'm a fast walker, I'm an A to B kind of person. I like to take all the steps that I encounter on my commute across London two steps at a time. So I'm having to like hitch my skirt up so I can take wide enough steps. So um, I may try and put a little slip back in it. It wouldn't need to be very high, but just to give me that full range of leg movements. But overall, a success, and I'm looking forward to making the jacket, which will realistically now will probably be in the new year. The next two things I've made were not featured in my sewing plans video because I actually did a really spontaneous bit of fabric shopping and was so excited about these two pieces of fabric that I sewed them up immediately before I even had a chance to tell you guys about the fabrics. So I had, you'll remember that I did a video um, that had a review in it of the um, Inner Haystack online um, subscriptions, like a subscription for sewists. And there was a discount code for First for Fabrics, and I'd never ordered anything for, from First for Fabrics before, but I was aware of them because I know Tamlin from Sewn on the Tyne is a big fan and um, orders lots of fabrics from them. And so I had a browse and I found this beautiful fabric, let me tell you about it. So it's called the Stoff of Denmark Avalana Jersey in Storm Cloud Blue. What a lovely blue is that? And I was quite nervous about it because it was a bit difficult to tell from the website exactly how the colour would be. I thought it might have been a bit more grey toned than this, but I'm quite glad that it's got enough blue in it because grey is not so much my colour. But I turned this immediately. Oh, it's um, 
It was £10.95 a metre, which I think is a good price for a really high quality cotton jersey. It's like really nice and sturdy, it's not one that's gonna like cling to your the shape of your bra or anything like that. And I made a Tilly and the Buttons Freya top. And it's just been already such a staple in my wardrobe, even though I've only made it about a few weeks ago. And it's the same colour. Let's see, I'm just faffing around here. I'm probably just going to put pictures in for you so you don't need to. It's like the same blue as are in the speckles of this skirt. If you can see that. Oh my god, this is so hard. Can you see that it sort of picks out some of these blue speckles here? So I've been wearing this as an outfit to work already. Like... I'm a high necked Tilly in the Buttons Freya top with my sew over it ultimate pencil skirt hack. And that's been just a really sort of comfy, warm, but still relatively smart work outfit. So, win. I'm such a fan of the Tilly in the Buttons Freya. I don't know why it took me so long to make it, but it's now definitely one of my favourite patterns. Lastly, the last thing that I've made is the second fabric that I bought from First for Fabrics and it's this fabric that I'm wearing now and it is just so delicious. It is, I'm going to stand up to see if I can show you a bit closer. So it's a cable knit jersey, on the website I think it's called a clock cable knit jersey and it's in, the colour that I actually bought is navy blue and it was £11.95 a metre and it's just so cosy and what I did was after making my first True Bias Nico oversized tunic hack in this more flimsy jersey, I realised that I needed to make it in something a bit more sturdy and this is just perfect. Honestly, I have not taken this off. Again, it's like a tunic length, covers my bum, has a slit up the side so it's comfortable to walk in. I did, <laughs> I did have a bit of a blunder though because this fabric, being much more of a sturdy sort of Ponty Daroma type base fabric, as opposed to a really stretchy jersey, like it's got less stretch in it. And I made it the first time and I could not get it over my head and I was literally like squeezing it over my head, totally got it like almost stuck on my head. And I realized that that wasn't gonna work and I was gonna have to do something about that. So what I did is I actually used the Nina Lee Southbank sweater pattern piece as a guideline for me to like widen the neckline and to cut out like a bigger neck band, like a longer neck band. So I've essentially mashed together my oversized True Bias Nico dress tunic hack with the neckline and neck band from the Nina Lee Southbank sweater. So I did in the end end up with a cozy high neck jumper that I can get on and off over my head, so that's a relief. And I love this so much, like I genuinely have been wearing it like every day when I get home from work I take my smart clothes off, put a pair of leggings on and this big cosy jumper and I've just been like trying to avoid washing it because I just want to keep wearing it so I went back on the First for Fabrics website and was looking for more colours of this and they've got some beautiful colours but actually ones that weren't quite right so in the end I found some more fabric. Where did I get this from? Let me remind myself. Ah yes, myfabrics.co.uk. Is it .co.uk or .com? Anyway, it's My Fabrics and I'm a real fan of their website actually just because they have a really big variety and whatever fabrics they have, they have usually quite a big variety of colours. I'm very fussy with my colours. I'm totally driven by the colour of fabric. If the colour isn't a colour that I think will really complement my skin tone and my hair colour and everything else, I'm not I'm not interested at all. Like it can be the most beautiful fabric, but if it's not in the right colour palette, I just no. So I was really picky and was hunting around for some similar fabric and myfabrics.co.uk had what I assume is the same fabric. Um it feels the same to me. It's probably all I guess from the same like supplier and it's in on their website they called this denim blue and again it's quite hard sometimes to tell exactly what the colour is going to be like but it's a, a lighter blue so I think it's great that I'll have it's different enough from my navy one to be got a contrast and I just can't wait to get this sewn up into another true bias nico slash Nina Lee Southbank tunic hack <laughs> jumper dress jumper tunic hack so yeah, this is going to go on my cutting table this afternoon. 
My mission for this afternoon is to cut this out and start sewing it up because I just need to have another one so I can have one in the wash and one on my body. While I was on the My Fabrics website, I was also after some jersey because you may remember from my sewing plans video that I bought this fabric to make another like smart skirt for work and I wanted like a, a burgundy red sort of fabric to make a true bite, no, to make a Tilly and the Buttons Freya top that would complement the colours and I hadn't been able to find any right, the right colour anywhere so I bought this from, oh you can see in the nice light there, this fabric is from myfabrics.co.uk, it's a cotton jersey um, but it's a bit more flimsy than the one that I bought from First for Fabric, so it's a bit more flimsy than this one, this stuff of Denmark Avalana one. Um, but it still feels nice and soft and I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping that it will be a nice colour combination. So I'm going to have my Sew Over It pencil skirt, shortened version skirt, with a Tilly the Buttons frayer in this. That's the plan. This fabric was pretty affordable at £6.45 a metre. The final fabric that I have to show you is a really special one and I feel like it's quite out of my comfort zone but I'm really excited to sew with it. So it's from the new craft house. They have recently had some absolutely beautiful like party wear fabrics and I think a lot of them were ex-designer and they're really, really quite special. And I just fell in love with this one. It's quite unusual for me and it's not necessarily like colours that I would absolutely go for usually but just look at this I just think it's so stunning it's got sort of some pinky ready tones in it's also got some blue purple tones in and it looks almost a bit like scales it's got a little bit of green in there as well and I, this is the right side but I also really love the wrong side like how amazing is that and my plan this is going to be a special occasion dress i'm going to really take my time in making this um i don't quite yet know what it's going to be i think i want a fairly structured bodice probably high highish necked potentially with a cutout at the back and then quite a structured uh, like fit and flare pleated skirt but I really want to make this a real project and because these colours as I said with my little rant earlier about the colours have to be right the, this, these colours like immediately next to my skin I'm not sure totally how on board I am so but I've got a plan because I want it to be quite a full structured skirt I want to pick out one of the colours that really does work for me so maybe like maybe some of the rich sort of purpley colours and I want to get some tool of that colour and I want to have like some gathered tool sort of sticking out the bottom of the skirt like another sort of layer or attached to the hem I'm not really sure but basically I want to add accents of maybe like a deep purple maybe a blue but pick out one of these colours that really works for me and have it like as, almost as like a fringe around the hem maybe around the neckline maybe around the armholes maybe along the waistband, I want to like pick out a colour and add accents to the dress so it's, and I think it will add a real nice like mixture of like a different texture because this fabric is obviously very busy in a way and adding some elements of like a solid colour I think could be awesome. So yeah I'm going to start thinking about this one sort of in the new year, in the spring, it's one I'm going to really take my time on to hopefully be a special occasion dress that I'll then wear for years to come fingers crossed that's the plan so there we have it that's everything I've been sewing recently I've still got some things to sew on the list that I haven't got round to yet from my sewing plans video so those are still underway as well as these other two new fabrics that kind of snuck into the mix um, and yeah I'm pla I've got no plans really this year between Christmas and New Year I've kind of on purpose decided to hibernate a little bit at home and I'm hoping to just have a load of sewing time to just whack out some cosy jumpers and things for the new year. Thank you ever so much for watching, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of my videos. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you have any ideas 
or any co anything you'd like to say about what I've talked about today, particularly if you any of you have bought this fabric from your craft house or have any ideas of awesome dress patterns. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. If I don't put any more videos out before Christmas, have an amazing Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year. Bye.